worship God with our giving. We are to honor God with the first fruits of all of our increase. God has blessed you to receive some income this week. You should be tithing off of it. That is 10%. That 10% belongs to God. God does not ask for much. He's just asked that we uh, bless him with 10% and build the kingdom. And uh, to give an offering. We should give a free will offering. A free will offering. We know that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. As we prepare to give, those of you that are worshiping with us here in the sanctuary, please complete an offering envelope and leave it on your seat and it will be received as we leave on today. Those of you that are worshiping with us virtually, would you please check the bottom screen, the bottom of your screen, the lower thirds. You can give through Givelify, G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y, or through Cash App, dollar sign, Temple Faith Church. That's dollar sign, Temple Faith Church. Would you prepare to give on today? God, we thank you for this opportunity to give. God, we pray that as we share our tithe and our offerings today, that we all think about the fact that the tithe is yours. It belongs to you. And as we share our offerings, that we know that you love a cheerful giver. God, we pray that we are honoring you with our wealth and the first fruits of all of our increase. God, we pray that you bless what we hold in our hand. It is our seed that we are planting in good ground. God, as we honor you by giving, we pray that you will send increase regarding our finances and bless our homes and all that we have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you give right now? Would you give on today?
with us. God with us. In the opening pages of the Bible, we find God walking with Adam and Eve in the garden. He was literally, figuratively, and physically with Adam and Eve. When you look at the opening scriptures that's found in the book of Genesis. At the end of the Bible, we find God in the New Jerusalem living with a redeemed humanity. And between these, we find God interacting with his people, with the nations, and everything that he created. God is not a passive observer of his creation and all that takes place with us each day. God is an active participant in our daily lives, in our daily affairs. He's guiding and directing us according to his divine purpose for our life. As believers, we believe that God is transcendent and imminent. Transcendence means he is externally there. God is external to his creation. He's not bound by his creation. Imminence, on the other hand, refers to God's activity within his creation. So God is transcendent to his creation, and he's also imminent in his creation. Matthew 1 and 23 says, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. This was a fulfillment of the prophecy found in the book of Isaiah, which is translated God with us. Isn't it reassuring to know that God is with us? God is with us every day. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Before the birth of Jesus, the angel appeared to Joseph and revealed that his fiance Mary had conceived a child through the Holy Ghost. Mary would give birth to a son and they were to name him Jesus. Then Matthew, quoting Isaiah 7 and 14, provided this inspired revelation. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. 700 years earlier, the prophecy of Jesus' birth was shared. Emmanuel, and even in the Hebrew, it means God is with us. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning, it refers to the timeless eternity of Genesis. God recreated the heavens and the earth. John essentially wrote, when the beginning began, the word was already there. When the beginning began, the word, God's presence was already there. God has never been present, never been absent. He has always been present. There's never a time that God has not been with us. Can I get a witness on today? The idea is that the word existed before creation or even time. John makes it clear that the word is not just the beginning, but it is the beginning of the beginning. God was in the beginning of the beginning. He's always been there and always will be here. What's the word? Has the word a beginning? John says no, for if we, if we reach back to the beginning of time, God was present in the beginning of time. The, the, the word translated in Greek is logos. The idea of the logos has deep and rich roots in both Jewish and and Greek thinking. You've got to understand why John used these words when he was referring to God always being with us. The, the Greeks thought that their gods were just another level above man. But John was saying the word is God. And where the word is, God is. When God speaks his word, when God sends out his word, God's God goes with his word. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. It is more than just what the Greek philosophers were thinking about when they said logos, the power that puts sense into the world, the making the world orderly instead of chaotic. God is in the world or the world would be worse off than what it is today. I said God is in the world and the world would be worse off than what it is today. So therefore in the opening, John said to both Jews and Greeks, 
for centuries, for years, you've been talking about and thinking about the Word. Now, I'm going to tell you who the Word is. John says, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That was a very startling statement at the time, that God will come down to man and live with man. But that was just the beginning. God is with us now. God has never left us. God has never forsaken us. God is riding right along with us. When someone is with you, everybody knows that you're not alone and you have backup. So it means God with us. You're not by yourself. You have some backup. Can I get a witness today? I said you're not by yourself. You have some backup. You're not walking by yourself. You're not talking by yourself. God is with you. So it means God with us. God, God's name reveals his character. God isn't restricted by time. He is the I am. God is the beginning and the end. He is who he says he is. He is and he who was to come. When the children of Israel were traveling, God was with us. During the day, God would be a pillar of cloud by day. And at night, he was a pillar of fire. God made sure that the children of Israel knew his presence was always present. Don't you want to know that God's presence is always present? I said God's presence is always present. God is always with you. It means he exists. He has included himself in us. When there wasn't even in us, God was with us. Whenever, even when there wasn't in us, God was with us. The Bible says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Son of God literally came down and lived with us. He set up his tent in our camp. God showed us his glory and offered us his great grace and his truth through Jesus Christ. Jesus came and became more intimate by walking amongst us as a man. The Bible tells us he was tempted in every way. That means everything that you experience, God experiences through his son, Jesus Christ. John said in Revelation 21 and 3, when talking about the new heaven and the new earth, I also heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold! The dwelling of God is among men. God is with you right now. Are you hearing me? He says he shall tabernacle amongst them. That means set up camp. So wherever you are, God is setting up camp. Are you hearing me today? Wherever you are, God is setting up camp. Because God wants you to know you're not by yourself. Whatever you are experiencing, God is experiencing it with you. God appointed people to go up to Jerusalem three times a year on the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of the Tabernacle. The Feast of the Tabernacle is called Sukkot. The plural form is Sukkot, the temporary shelter. In this holiday, the people rejoice. Why did they rejoice? Because they know they knew they would feel God's presence in that celebration. The tabernacle Moses built on earth was just a shadow of what was to come. Are you with me on today? It was just a shadow of experiencing God's presence. God wants to be with us in every situation that we experience. We are his people and he is our God. As a believer, you must know that God is your God. You must know that God is faithful. You must know that God cares about you, that God is concerned about you, that God wants to answer your prayers. God wants to fulfill your desires. You don't have to feel lonely. The word Emmanuel means God with us is not just a word of blessing. It's God's desire to be with his creation. From the beginning of your life to the end of your life, God wants to be intimately involved in your life. God wants to be in relationship with you. All you have to do is say, God, I want to be in relationship with you. God, I want to get to know you. God, I want to love you. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. God, I want to know that you're with me. You want God's glory to fill your tabernacle. Today, God makes himself known to us 
in the most intimate way through his son, Jesus Christ. He reveals himself as our redeemer. Jesus is God with us as a reconciler. God wants to repair the relationship he once had with you. You may be separated from God right now, but God wants you to return to him. God wants you to be in right relationship with him. God wants you to love him. God wants you to rely on him. And God wants you to know him. Can I get a witness today? The Bible tells us, for God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. No longer counting our sins against us. Jesus is not only God with us, but God in us. I said Jesus is not only God with us, he's God in us. When you come into right relationship with God, God's spirit comes to take up residence in your life. And when God's spirit comes to take up residence in your life, that means you are never alone. Where you walk and talk, God is with you because God is dwelling down on the inside. Our body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. And it's where God dwells. We are the temple of the living God. As God says in 2 Corinthians 6 and 16, I will live in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Jesus is, is not God with us temporarily, but Jesus is God with us eternally. God the Son, never ceasing for a moment to be divine. He took on a human nature and became God with us forever. Jesus said, for surely I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. In Matthew 18 and 20, Jesus tells us where two or three of us are gathered together in his name, he will be in the midst of us. That means when you gather with another believer in the name of Jesus Christ, for whatever reason, Jesus says, I'm with you. God with us. When you pray with your prayer partner, God is with you. When you call your worship partner, God is with you. When you come together for a joint cause, God is with you. In Daniel 3 and 25, Nebuchadnezzar saw that fourth person in the fiery furnace, and he said it was like the Son of God. In John 14, 16 to 17, Jesus said, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter to help you and be with you forever. How long? Jesus said, the comforter will be with you forever. How long is forever? Forever is forever. You don't have to worry about God leaving you. God promised I will never leave you nor forsake you. Jesus promised that the Father would give us uh, that comforter. That comforter would be like Jesus. Jesus said he would be with us forever. God told Joshua in Joshua 1 and 9, Have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. God has made us that same promise. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I will be with you wherever you go. See, some of us need a backup plan. We need somebody to give us courage, somebody to come alongside of us. On last night, I was watching a movie, I won't name it. It was one of those stupid movies that Sidney Poitier and uh, uh, Bill Cobb made back in the 70s. One of my favorites, it's a classic. And uh, you remember that one scene where they went, into, they went into the bar and they were looking for the, I can't remember his name, the short guy. And they were talking a lot of mess. They were talking a lot of mess. Bill Cosby was talking real big until Big Percy came on the scene. Big Percy, remember Big Percy? Big Percy came on the scene and it changed the whole atmosphere. It changed everything that Bill Cosby and Sidney Poitier were saying because Big Percy was getting ready to lay it on them. We've got to be the same way. When we take God with us, God is like Big Percy in that movie. God brings the muscle. God brings the protection. God will give you some confidence. When you don't have confidence, when you take God into a situation with you, God will give you the confidence that you need. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. When God promises to be with us, God's presence includes his plan, his protection, his provision, his peace, and his power. Where God is, his power is as well. Don't you know that 
God is all powerful. There is nobody stronger than God. There's nobody bigger than God. There's nobody can stop God from doing what he wants to do. So wherever you take God, God is going with you. And what comes with God is his power. Where God is, is his protection as well. Where God is, is his provision. Don't you know when you have God with you, God is not going to let you go without? You're with God. I said when God is with you, God is not going to let you go without because he's with you. You can turn to God and say, I'm with him. And when you turn to God and say, I'm with him, that opens up incredible possibilities when you are with God. A cattle on a thousand hills is his. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. When someone comes up to threaten you, all you got to do is turn to God and say, I'm with him. You may think you can take me, but you can't take me and God. Do I have a witness on today? Hallelujah. When you add God to your scenario, it becomes a winning team. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. The very fact that God is with you should bring you peace. Even cowards become brave when they have some backup. Haven't you experienced, you know that you know that fellow's a coward, but now that he got his boys with him, all of a sudden he has courage. Brother, he has courage because of who's with him. We gotta be the same way with God. We can be a coward struggling through life, but when God comes alongside of us, we gotta get some courage. We gotta get some determination because, because we know greater is he that is within us than he that is within the world. We know that if God be for us, he's more than a whole world against us. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. God with us has a special meaning to those who have surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. God in the person of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, is with us in a very personal and intimate way. God with us. What does it mean? It means when you declare that God is with you, you declare that I'm never alone, even in my darkest times, even in your toughest times, your darkest times, your most critical times, God is with you. You may feel like you're, you're facing things all by yourself, but God is with you. It means that you're never by yourself, even, even in your most challenging times, that you must know that you can trust no matter what comes your way, that God will keep you safe. We can have no greater privilege than to have God with us. Don't you want God to be with you rather than against you? I said, don't you want God to be with you rather than against you? Nobody can be God. God, when God is with you, that means God is for you. Nothing can come against you. No one can stand between you and God. God is with us and God is for us. Where there is death, God brings life. Where there is fear, God brings courage. Don't you want some courage to face what you're facing today? You don't even know what tomorrow brings, but take God with you and that ought to give you some confidence. You don't even know what the answer is going to be. You've been waiting on your application. You've been waiting for that approval, but trust God. Trust that God went ahead of you and brought you some favor. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. When I was afraid, you were with me and you lifted me up. God, you lifted me up because you were with me. How can I ever be defeated when God is with me? I'm undefeated. I have an undefeated season as long as God is with me. Thus says the Lord who created you. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God. God made a promise to you to fear not. For I am with you. If God was in the fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, God will be in the fire with you. If God was in the lion's den with Daniel, see, sometimes we leave God in the Bible. It's time to take God out of the Bible. Sometimes in your prayer time, just take your Bible. Take that real Bible. You know the Bible that your grandma gave you. Dust it off and bring it into your prayer time and lift that body. 
giants in your life. You have some problems and situations that are bigger than you. You can't come to the conclusion that you need to. There's a giant that's scaring you. There's a giant that keeps you balled up. But God is with you. Just like God was with David.
Amen. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to invite you to accept him on today. Would you ask him into your heart, into your spirit? Ask him to come in and change you. Ask him to come in and change you. Would you do that on today? Let's pray this prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you come into my heart, come into my life and change me. Make me new, God. Make me a whole new person. I want to be saved. I want to be right. I want you to change my mind, change my heart, change my attitude, change my life. I welcome you in. I repent of my sins and ask that you forgive me on today. I want to be saved. You said in your word you would be faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Would you cleanse me from all unrighteousness today? God, I thank you. I thank you for saving me. You sincerely prayed that prayer. Would you call the church at 765-416, excuse me, 765-614-8745. 765-614-8745. Would you please call us? Or you can send us an email at Temple of Faith 2015 at yahoo.com we want to be a blessing to you we want to help you in your new walk join us on Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock for our virtual Bible study our concepts for living you can join us via Facebook live or you can call into our conference call line at 765-202-7098 and then join us for our New Year's Eve celebration on Saturday, December 31st, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., we will have dinner and a movie, free community events. Join us in our fellowship hall for our New Year's Eve celebration on Saturday, December 31st. May the Lord bless you and keep you, is our prayer.